I'm Felicia Cravens, and if you've ever struggled to speak out in a meeting or had trouble following the Roberts rules and everything, I'm going to help you get better and make sure that you understand what's going on at convention. This is a Roberts Rules Refresher for those of you who've never felt really comfortable participating in a meeting. I want you to understand that parliamentary procedure is designed to help groups make decisions together. Their purposes are to help the will of the majority be determined and also to help protect the rights of the minority in the group, but also to make group decisions very efficiently. Let's look at some fundamental principles of parliamentary procedure. First, the organization is paramount. That means that the body's priorities come before any single individual's priorities. But that said, all members are equal. That means no member has any more rights than any other member. Also, we want to do one thing at a time. We want to have one motion on the floor. We want to have one speaker on the floor at a time. This helps make business go faster, even if it makes us wait to take our turn. We also want to have full discussion before a vote. And full discussion doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to speak. It means we set limits on the time and we allow everyone an opportunity to speak. Doesn't mean they get to speak, but that there's a chance for them to get to the microphone, say, and actually speak and add their voice to the discussion. Another principle, don't waste time. If you have a motion, make your motion quickly, briefly, and succinctly, and wait. If you have uh, anything going on in debate, make your point quickly. Anything that you can do to make sure that we stay on target, stay on task, and stay on time makes for a better meeting. A few more fundamentals of parliamentary procedure to follow the majority rules on regular issues. If it's a day-to-day, -day, normal, unremarkable issue, the majority will usually carry that issue in voting. But be aware that for extraordinary questions that limit rights of members, things like that, you'll want a two-thirds majority. And that's things like limiting debate or suspending the rules for some reason. You would need a two-thirds majority for extraordinary questions like that. Also, remember that silence is consent. If you don't vote on a measure, it has the same effect as if you voted on the prevailing side. So let your opinion be heard. Now we'll cover some commonly used motions. These are things you'll hear often in meetings, and it's good to know what they're for. If you want to get a meeting back on track that is derailed, that is not following the agenda, you make the motion, call for the orders of the day. That takes one person and it can get us right back on track if we've wandered away. If there's a rule that's not being enforced and not being followed, you can enforce it by claiming to have a point of order. Point of order requires the chairman to rule on that. If you need information, if you are uncertain of a thing that has been said or an action you're taking, you can request information by asking for a point of information. Make sure that's a question though, a legitimate question, and not a means to further debate. That would be out of order. If you're through with debate and you want to make a motion to move on to the vote, you would call or move the previous question. You can call the question or move the previous question and that will bring us to debate if the body votes to go ahead and vote. You have to have a vote before you get to the vote. Also, if you find that there is a motion that has too many pieces that really make it confusing, you can ask to divide the question, which would separate the question into manageable parts, two or more. And finally, if you think voice votes are distorting the outcome of a vote, you can call, any one member can call for a division of the house. And that means you'll have a show of hands or a standing vote instead. So if certain people are way too loud in their eyes or nose and drowning out other voices, you can use division of the house to make sure other people are heard by having a standing vote. Finally, 
Here are a few tips when you want to debate a motion. This will help make sure that your motion is well received and that you have an opportunity to talk about your issues without being corrected or causing things to go too slowly. First, when you want to address an issue, be near the microphone and wait to be recognized by the chair before speaking. You don't want to start launching in to your debate without it being in proper form. Secondly, identify yourself by name and precinct at your Senate district convention, or if you're at state, by your Senate district, name and Senate district. That way everyone knows who's speaking. When you are about to make your motion, make the motion and then stop to wait for a second instead of starting to argue it straight away. The chair will call for a second. If no one seconds it, you don't get to discuss it, but you want to make sure you have a second on the floor before continuing. And then the chair will recognize you to speak first to your motion. Lastly, always address the chair in debate and never the other delegates. Direct all your comments to the chair. It keeps things level and even and cool-headed and avoids shouting matches on the floor. And there you have it, a really quick summary of some Roberts Rules motions that you need to know, debate tips, and a little bit of defining things. I hope you have a great convention. We'll see you there.